was interesting to discuss the ideas and the course of development of the creation of International Academy for Global Studies, uh, which was has been discussed <coughs> yesterday and today under the framework of this representative forum as today. We gathered people from different countries and different scientific directions. We are talking about yet another um, idea of getting together, of joining the progressive thinking people, which are not indifferent in the face of the future, which are worrying about the future and the fate of the life of the future generations of the uh, young uh, inhabitants of the planet Earth our department, which I'm a representative of the Moscow University, is one of the co-organizers of the, uh, so we are enjoying an opportunity to moderate this section, this introductory uh, resume. I wanted to enlighten or dwell upon uh, several stages of, of of the history, already young history of creation of the International Academy for Global Studies. But before I wanted to I be, take the liberty to tell you about that, um, like many others uh, present here today, were the participants of recent in Moscow, recently taken in Moscow International Scientific Congress Globalistics. It was the third Congress. Dedicated to the 18th uh, anniversary, 50th anniversary of the of Bernadsky, who was the uh, stop, the pillar of the global mentality. This congress was a very represented, representative event. Uh, 70 participants from 40 countries of all the continents, and took place in uh, almost all scientific. Uh, sides of Moscow as a conference and in the, on the global scale because we uh, were online with uh, California, African countries far east. This event was extremely important and gathered uh, many intellectuals uh, who really were worrying by with the, the, the fact that the beginning of the 21st century brought, uh, has been bringing, instead of promised solutions, turned into uh, sharpening of political situation, worsening of strategic instability, economic crisis, uh, uh, in deepening of the ecological problems and worsening. I'm very pleased by the fact that the Moscow University and its partner managed to get together the pool of um, international organizations involved in these problematics, such as UNESCO in the face of General Director Irina Bokova, supported the, um, this Congress and supplied uh, and uh, offered the auspices. It was a Vernadsky year in the um, Russian International Year of Vernadsky, which supported this Congress in line with uh, together with uh, other national academies, Congress was supported to aid, was provided with uh, social institutions, international institutions, uh, Russian Academy of Science, and a very wide range of uh, events took place uh, there. Our foreign colleagues and partners, uh, which are the members, with the memberships of different associations, uh, when got in contact, besides, in spite of the fact they uh, don't know Vernadsky well enough, it's his contribution into the world science, it's critical, uh, critical scientific development of our great minds, and because of due to this, the wide international positioning of the conference was very important for the popularization of Russian science and the development of um, Vernadsky achievements. The event was really big, were really representative, international. In the good sense of it, I want to flatter that very often uh, 
Nowadays, there are many events which attract young people and representatives of uh, large scientists, which are called headliners. Uh, some live classics of the uh, uh, William Thompson, Gurdjieff, David Christian. I'm afraid to omit somebody to skip some any name be, because every name is a just the star of the modern science, this Congress was dedicated not only to globalistic, to global studies, which in itself was uh, the subject of a, a, long, a lot of disputes. It was an international interdisciplinary event under the auspices of the framework of which uh, both philosophers, mathematicians, psychological, politologists, economists, seven sections, five round tables, two symposiums, two video conferences took place. Twenty-three sites, but the life sites on one of the sites in the Kurchatov Institute, uh, more than 200 scientists took place. And in the Institute of uh, Asian and Asian and African countries was 300 specialists living al along the uh, sites uh, in the campus of the Moscow University. There were a lot of disputes. We achieved some results. Man. It's a very rare event where the event with such complex architectronics, which are and the from complex from the cognitive and philosophical and scientific point of view, where geologists, geographers, biologists, ecologists, politologists, and economists have the uh, speak the same language, in spite of the fact they have their own field, uh, they uh, all have their own, they have highly specialized uh, scientific vocabulary. It's, uh, speaks to in favor of the globalization. The world is still is really globalized, which we are all facing and embracing also countries or uh, global villages, global cities appear and new forms of global uh, research. Not in vain I was mentioning this con uh, Congress because now I'm switching to you see, this slide shows the variety of the Congress sites on the Lenin Hills, in the Varabiova Gori, in the Mahavayan, in, in this building, in the Kavchatov Institute. A scientific discussions took place, which joined together, bring to their gear the people from different countries. They have uh, uh, communal things inside, the, I, they share ideas, and they were all talking about. Uh, looking for searching the solutions, looking for possible. We must realize that it is unavoidable. Most, um, many modern paradigms uh, require rebranding, new rethinking, rethinking, revisiting in the global system of coordinates. Uh, to this, uh, this forum is also seeking in this direction in the Academy of Science. It's very tremendously important that uh, Vernadsky, who was thinking about these matters in the beginning of the previous the 20th century, many different ideas were sounded, uh, spoke out today, spoke about uh, getting together as a Moscow club, which would, in some sense, um, served as some sim similarity with a Roman club which would unite uh, scientists, politicians, representatives of media on the new level, at the new and new stage of the development, the beginning of the uh, 2010s. But our scientists um, uh, uh, decided that probably it would be even more useful to organize the more corporate, more um, convenient for scientific uh, uh, scientific community as academy. So Platon Academy has 2,000 years at an international. So the idea was uh, emerged to uh, create the International Academy for Global Studies. The events which preceded the Congress, this idea was uh, raised and was spoken out. And so Due to one a very active participant, Academician Ursu, Arkady Arkady Ursu, uh, the idea was to uh, do the rebranding of the Academy of Nosphere, 
moreover, the cover, even mask is dedicated to 150th anniversary of uh, Vernadsky. This academy acquired the international stage, uh, international stages, which uh, facilitates a whole range of international issues. So we decided, we asked, we addressed all the participants uh, to think about this interdisciplinary, intergenerational, you know, in all respects, international academy, uh, where serious analytical research could be addressed to the governments or other structures, which um, decision-making structures, uh, through uh, addressing international organization, uh, so it could be bring, bring this contribution like a Rome, the Roman club could have done, uh, because uh, they timely raised their whole range of issues, and so we accepted this proposal uh, to convert the Academy of Nostia into Global Academy of uh, Global Studies. It's feasible due to our legislation. So a group of initi initiative people around it, the idea, Arkady Orso, academician, with great enthusiasm, he accepted this idea. Uh, Ask our academician Arkhav, who himself is a very interdisciplinary being a mathematician, he is asked uh, to take part in the global studies in sociology, economics, and global studies. Our department, Department of Global Studies, although it's small, but it has 550 students. It's a new field in science, globalistics. I've recently spoke to the dean of the university, Viktor Sadovnici, who agreed to take active part in the creation of this international organization and in the course of preparation for the World Forum of Global Civilizations, we started to discuss with Yuri Vladimirovich Yakovets this idea. And so it happened that in the International Institute of Sorokin and Kondratyev, this idea was in the air. It was my pleasure to get acquainted with our great friend Jan Xiaohua, the chairman of Organization for Support of Global Civilization, who is here with the large group of his Chinese uh, followers. He's a great teacher and theoretician, so his ideas expressed in many of his works are very close to us. So in this way, we have formed the, uh, the task force, which started to discuss details how this academy should look like. And we've started uh, the process of legislative changes, and November 13th we have submitted to the Ministry of Justice the necessary papers which will allow to update the legislation, because the first documents have uh, been dated by 1991, 1994, which testifies to a solid long-term character of this organization, International Academy. And we have agreed this should be very academy with a broad international participation in the fields where it will work. You see here pro practically all fields of science embracing the entire array spectrum of challenges of modern civilization, globalization, energetics, demographics, geopolitical uh, problems, uh, moral changes, cultural issues, education, sustainable development, etc., etc. We have also discussed that it's very important that this academy should not have one dominating figure, even is you know, a great scientist. Because globalistics is global studies. Global studies include everything from philosophy to mathematics. And in each area, there are its own working leaders and people of authorities. Those who are living gurus and those who are still uh, strong enough and active enough to solve organizational issues. Behind some of them are university departments, uh, chairs of the universities, uh, some organizations which may are able to resolve different issues. So it 
we wanted to create a very open structure allowing us to include creative intellectual potential. Uh, we'd like to see a, st a constellation of gurus as uh, honored presidents, honorable presidents. Each of these names should be internationally respected. So let's name him Mr. John Smith or Mr. Ivanov is the highest authority in his field. Of course, we would like him to have a first deputy as a vice president who would be able to lead one of the departments and the department should match one of the fields of activity of this academy. So it's an unusual structure. And we have suggested that unlike traditional academies, this academy should be able to include web forums. Why, in order to be accepted to the academy, one should come in person? We can do it over the web, over the internet. It can be controlled. Secretariat of the academy should work well. It's just an idea. It's just a thought. But we, in this way, we can increase the membership and the number of supporters as well. So the Chinese colleagues suggested we should involve young people into the work of academy. Sometimes uh, people say that Academy of Sciences is a building with bronze brains, that the old people here with bra brains of bronze are sitting inside and they are only, only fighting not to give away what they have. But this is a public academy, so let's create a council of young scientists under the auspices of the academy, including their talented students, postdocs, post young scientists, who in this way will get support and contact with the per persons of authority who could be their mentors and counselors. On the other hand, the young people would find themselves in the world of breakthrough ideas, world of innovations. It's very important not to forget that we should have honored members of the Presidium. The bureaucratic structure should work smooth, less, uh, smooth because it's International Academy. It has to maintain connections, has to find solutions, it has to quickly react to world events. On my part, I'd like to say that after a long discussion, Moscow University and the Department of Globalistics, together with its partners and colleagues, is ready to accept the function of a temporary headquarters for the organizing of the first steps of the Academy. Then, with time passing, somebody else will take over, or probably will have to enlarge the organizational structure. What is offered here, the next slide, uh, we discussed it with Oskar Akayevich, with Yuri Vladimirovich, with Arkady Dmitrievich. We have discussed the main fields of activity for the academy that should match its departments. Probably it's not quite well seen at this slide, but it is presented uh, in, in the Dialogue of Civilization magazine, the structure and the concept. It can be changed. It can be filled with new content. We are creating academy not as a political party. An academy is created as a public movement, so it should incorporate such mechanisms that are able to absorb the best both from the people who are already has a name in the world science and young people with their ideas and innovations. And in this way, this is how it will, the new interdisciplinary field of global studies will develop. Therefore, here we invite you all to cooperate. The doors are widely open. I'm very happy that today's event is a great opportunity to present this idea, which has a history of its own already, 
which has great names standing behind it, I believe that today and tomorrow we'll find new followers from different countries of the world. I have no doubt in it. Well, a few days later, we have first, not in this hall, it was not the red hall, it was the blue hall, on October 25th, when we analyzed the results of the third international forum on Congress and Globalistics, Global Studies, we have made this idea public, it was uh, publicized by the media, but here is a list of activities and events which are already agreed. So it's not just let's do something, let's write something. I know that our Chinese colleagues are ready in next year in Beijing and spring to hold the session of Academy and discuss the presentation about the system of goals for sustainable development. Definitely the website is a must because currently without uh, your own uh, internet provider uh, your website can, can go nowhere. There are colleagues in Kiev who are ready to make uh, this website. There is an idea to hold large-scale forums in Wien, in Vienna, in Vienna, in Japan, and in Russia, in St. Petersburg. We see ahead of us such tasks as to participate in large events, the in the events of the Consortium of Global Studies, which will take place in Dublin, in uh, in in in, in uh, Roskilde University in Denmark. Many many events, international events. Uh, global uh, e e studies. You cannot visit all of them. You should not even set such a goal to visit all of them because due to modern uh, technologies and Skype conferences, one can be attending. It's very important to prepare and to publish textbooks. It's very important to train uh, special experts in this field because global studies in the field where people come with def different uh, ed educational background. I am a biologist and geologist, and now I'm politologist. I know a philosopher who is now into global studies. It's quite natural in this day and age, day and age of integrated science, day and age of globalization of science, and this is how it should be. Therefore, our educational activity, our work with the young, with the younger generation, our work with the colleagues who want to know more in this field and to look at the world through the prism of new paradigm, the paradigm of a global world which is standing on the ancient traditions of Greek philosophers and oriental sages and our immediate ancestors both in Europe and America and in Russia, it facilitates such an approach. So I believe that this great event, if it will support the concept and the structure of the Academy, if it will, will join the Academy, we are open for broadest cooperation. Who are we? Probably each of us who is ready to participate, this makes us. It's good when we have people speaking common language and this Academy of Global Studies has already its point of crystallization, point of support. And I would like to thank for what we are doing here. Thank you. Who's next? Yuri Vladimirovich. Thank you. I'd like to name three factors of vital importance where the increased role of science in global development is important and the creation of a scientific framework for it, which was presented by the previous speaker, the Academy for Global Studies. The first factor, the world within the last 10 to 15 years is radically changed, has radically changed and these changes are still taking place and the 
scale of the change, scale of change is the one happening once in a few hundred years, civilization crisis, civilization revolution, which take place at the change of global civilization. Moreover, this development is directed in two different directions. On one hand, we're talking about dissociation. If in the 19th and 20th century we had a number, of, a small number of states and colonial empires, now we have about 200 nation states with its own interests, giant states and uh, dwarf states, but still they are separate. On the other hand, we are getting on the new integration level. There are integrated amalgamations, such the most uh, uh, large of them being European Union. And we see the creation of the global civilization, which becomes an objective factor, because main elements of the genotype of the civilization, they um, are becoming global. So the world now is different from what it has been 20 years ago, in 1992, when the strategy for global sustainable development has been adopted. This is number one. And this requires its own scientific explanation. Second, and, and, so, and so far we don't see it neither in government nor in the United Nations. The second factor, we have a gap between speed of changes and the understanding of the essence and the core of these changes on the part of the state elite, be it scientific, go government or business elite, this is now dominating the Western civilization. So this gap is widening, it's transferred to the next generation, who are able at the age of 30 to make new decisions, but they are unable to understand what's going on and to make adequate decisions. So the main basis of changes in Africa, in uh, the Arab world and in Ukraine, they are based on the indignation of the young generation in Europe. Uh, there is a growth of anger and indignation because half of unemployed are young people. So the gap between the world and the decision making process we cannot understand what's going on. The third factor is that the scientific base that existed for 200 years and was the basis for decision making, mostly strategic decisions. First of all, industrial paradigm, it is it's not working in, under new terms and conditions. It does not reflect the new world, which is, has appeared in the 21st century. Therefore, we have to form We are standing on the shoulders of our predecessors. The cornerstones of today's science were made in the 20th century. Brother Lishan Peter, Vernadsky, Sarokin, Bogdanov, and many, many others who had foreseen where the humankind is going to and put such cornerstones in the foundation of the new building of the new paradigm of social sciences, which is currently in demand. So these three reasons, they require new vision. And I have to say there is one more uh, uh, reason for us being able to do it by ourselves and do it here in Russia. Not only because we have great predecessors like Vernadsky, but because we have already schools for this 20 years, which are world leaders. Why? Because critical situation calls for thinking. Critical situation results in a birth of what Mr. Of Kondr Professor Kondratiev said. For a few decades prior to the start of the great cycle, the wave of technological inventions starts, followed by the wave of innovations, followed by economic growth. And we are currently seeing this being formed. We are acting on global arena starting 2006 when we were first to held 
three round tables in the United Nations headquarters, Rio plus 20, Rio plus 10, and seven civilization forums. So this school of Russian cyclism, Russian Nosferic school, globalistic school, integrated forecasting school, they are among the lead world leaders. Because as we know that the one with experience is worth two without. So in a current situation, when science came to a dead end, we are able to offer a way out of the dead end. Uh, the gap between authorities and the science is growing, but I believe that life will force, and because of the generational change in the among the authorities, they will be forced to come to the sci to science. This initiative makes a new step in the creation, uh, which is the creation of the Global Academy, and this Global Academy is a new type of academy because it's being built not according to the type of science or the field of knowledge which are separated. I remember when the critical situation has been developed by the Presidium of the Academy of Sciences, but each technology has been belonging to an individual field of science. No interdisciplinary technology has been identified as critical. Our field of research, globalistics and six components of global civilization, energy, demographic, technological, geopolitical, social, cultural, are not the field but agglomeration of uh, scientists of different prof specialities united together to resolve the interdisciplinary problems. It's, in in it's interdisciplinary, it's international, we have strong ties that forms with decades and in our department we see ma scientists from many countries, it's also part of globalization process, it's uh, public, so it's not limited by money allocated by the bureaucrats and has not to follow the orders of bureaucrats, because bureaucrats are short-sighted, they have their own interest in mind. Well, we ourselves define what our priorities. And even today, we have seen the birth of a new trend based on Oskar Akayev presentation. And I've thought, probably we should repeat Nikita Moisev, heroic did, who has demonstrated that science is able to turn political act if it's well said, said on time and well argumented and substantiated. So let's take the first the first field for substantiation of sustainable development. Let's undertake a project of developing global substantiate sustainable development model built on the uh, entire structure of civilization, not just the Cold War or energy energy, energy and uh, environmental, social demographic, mentioned by Natalia Rimashevska, technological, economic, which we'll discuss tomorrow, geopolitical, which is uh, studied by Alexandra Gaev, and social cultural will be able to uh, perform a systematic approach and everything will grow quantitatively up to 2040. So the centennial plan will get its implementation with two scenarios. Either catastrophe, if the current trends will prevail and continue, or innovation breakthrough, if we'll be able to turn in the different directions. So I believe, I suggest that the branches we are talking now. I, I suggest we should unite here and uh, in the Congress, on the Congress in China, in Beijing, 
we should discuss the issue and submit it to the UN through the Scientific Council consisting of 26 scientists including one Russian and one Chinese scientist. So we should address the UN Secretary General, UNESCO, in order to offer an alternative. Because the papers which I'm reading currently, and I've read yesterday and before, adopted by Rio Plus 20, Sustainable Development Goals, Geo 5, they are not systematic. They don't have systematic approach, they're not deep. They don't understand cyclic character of development. They, there is no notion of civilization. So this is just another m way to increase a gap between science and authorities. Not, no one will do it for us. We have to fight for scientific recognition on our own. Thank you. Our guest, Professor Gasparini, Professor Director of Institute of International Sociology from Italy, Globalization, Way to Global World. I remind everyone about the schedule. Speak to the microphone, Individual include uh, uh, represent a strong attack uh, on the full membership uh, of uh, the traditional community. Then we have uh, the international organizations or, uh, undermine international law based on, based on uh, national sovereignty. But, uh, uh, however, this not uh, represents uh, a guarantee of uh, world peace. Uh, far less of uh, the disappears of uh, uh, conflicts. These are uh, for at last two reasons. First, uh, 
is that there are uh, at least uh, two ways uh, to face uh, the conflicts. Uh, and second, uh, there are at least uh, four concepts of peace. The first, uh, uh, in the, in the uh, ways uh, to face the conflicts, we have uh, two kinds of uh, uh, values, uh, ultimate values, uh, honor, family, homeland, uh, freedom, and uh, free initiative, uh, and so on, of course. Uh, meaning, uh, the meaning is uh, face a conflict uh, as uh, if uh, in, uh, he risked his life, uh, where he and this is the individual. Uh, but uh, above all, all this all is part of a culture. It happens uh, also in uh, uh, Yugoslavia, the, uh, the recent uh, wars in uh, Yugoslavia, and so on. The intermediate, uh, this is uh, typical, these ultimate values are typical of the traditional culture. And the uh, intermediate uh, values, uh, the result is are the result of the conflict. is not uh, uh, is not at the zero sum in the sense that uh, I do not want to destroy the opponent, but the winner wins for 60, 70 percent, and the loser loser wins for the 40 percent. Uh, other example of this is Czechoslovakia. So the, uh, the attachment uh, from the uh, Czech, Czech Republic and uh, Slovak, Slovak. We may see also to pass uh, to the, uh, the four concept of peace. We have uh, uh, the polysemic of peace uh, in the sense that uh, many cultures develop uh, different uh, ways, uh, uh, different co uh, consideration uh, of uh, peace. There is uh, the peace of tradition and uh, the peace of modernity. The peace of, tra of uh, traditional society is the ideal of a, a, a stable equilibrium where everything is predictable and it is perfectly accepted. Uh, this is, uh, there is a uh, posit positive inevitability. This is uh, the traditional, uh, the kind of uh, the, a peace uh, uh, of the traditional society. In uh, uh, peace of modernity is the product of a permanently unstable equilibrium because each individual has a number of basic rights as well as some freedoms uh, which have to be combined with the freedom of others. Uh, the rights are uh, expressed in social justice. These are uh, in the modern countries, of course. The other uh, two, uh, the other two uh, kind of peace are the peace of goods and uh, the peace of go uh, good. The peace of goods uh, are, uh, is uh, the peace uh, brought by the consumerism, uh, consumerism society. Uh, the piece of good is the product of the dissemination and assertion in a country of a strong ideological conception of good, morals, utopia, religion, and so on. Uh, uh, we may... No, the other. Ecco. We may combine... Uh, we may combine the two uh, kind of uh, the two kind of uh, peace, uh, peace of tra tradition and peace of modernity, peace of good, peace of goods. Uh, of course, we may see also these four uh, uh, box uh, also at the light of the reference to ultimate values or intermediate values. Is too long to explain, but uh, I would like uh, I, I would like uh, that uh, the pure traditional societies are are uh, societies uh, societies as Afghanistan, Pakistan, as other or in many many is diffused in the uh, African societies and so on. Uh, in general, uh, is predominant the uh, ultimate values. Uh, over the uh, intermediate values is ma uh, plus, 
the first and Magnus the second. In uh, the second box, uh, we have the Sensei traditional society, in which uh, we have uh, uh, aspect of the traditional society and the other aspect of the, uh, uh, of the modern society. Is uh, a combination, a combination uh, between uh, the, uh, the Buddha and the uh, refrigerator or elevator or, or what you uh, see. Of course, uh, we have many, uh, many societies uh, that uh, respond, uh, is collocated here. Uh, the, third, uh, the third box uh, is traditional more society, in the sense uh, that these societies uh, are modern because uh, have uh, created a revolution, uh, modern industrial revolution, but they are tied to, to the traditional uh, values. Uh, at, the, uh, at the end, we have the sensate modern society. Sensate modern society. One more. Eh? One more. One? One? Decline. Decline? What? Uh, example? Example. Uh, in my opinion, traditional modern society, uh, societies are the uh, post-socialist uh, or former socialist post-Soviet Union in this, in this case. Uh, Sensei moder modern societies are, uh, are the societies uh, that are of course modern Western society of, in uh, different ways but uh, this, uh, the, problem, uh, the problem of the peace uh, is when uh, when uh, enter in the interrelation between uh, the different, uh, different, uh, cell, different boxes, one uh, with uh, four, one with two, one with three, and two with three, one uh, with uh, four, and so on. In general, we have uh, that in uh, the uh, box. Uh, sorry, but uh, I have uh, made a mistake. But uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the contact uh, with uh, the uh, box one, box four, the societies of box one, uh, box, uh, box four, we have uh, independence. Uh, the alternatives are independence between uh, from one another, dependence uh, of category one, two of countries uh, on those of category four, or Add on, add on crash. Uh, in the contact uh, between one and two, there is a coldness. And the uh, contact at, uh, one and three indifference. Uh, the coolness because, uh, because there, uh, these two countries follow radical and different ways to arrive to peace and modernization. Uh, indifference because uh, there are two different approaches to the modernity. One through goods, uh, conserving traditions, and the other through new enlightenment uh, uh, revolution, radical uh, to reach the goods. Uh, but uh, in the two and three, there are other uh, contact between two and three countries uh, where to include Islam and Buddha uh, with car and refrigerator. Uh, then uh, we have the category three may become or try to be a guide for those of uh, category two. Uh, category two and four uh, and three or four, but uh, uh, we, uh, we have uh, other, uh, we have other uh, possibilities of uh, international relations. Seen from this point of view, the process of globalization is uh, weak because globalization, globalization needs peace in order to exploit communications structure. Peace provides certainty, certainty and therefore predictability. But peace don't need doesn't need worldwide globalization. Uh, in this situation, we have an impasse. An impasse 
globalization, peace uh, are in, uh, in conflict in a certain way, or a uh, certain way. But uh, the uh, globalization has some tools to exorcise violent conflicts. And the first, uh, the first is, uh, no, A, A, is, uh, uh, world, uh, worldwide globalization is a process involving development of structure uh, which are uh, all of trade relations and a form of uh, sharing of goods. Globalization configures a new idea of empire in that it is uh, a metaphor of world power. The third, the empire of worldwide globalization makes it possible for all countries to be central in some function. It, it becomes, yes, 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 it becomes a laboratory of something of new, let's say Dubai, let's say other things. Uh, another concept, concept is the reconciliation, as a tool is a reconciliation uh, within a state is congruent with the worldwide uh, globalization. Uh, reciprocal knowledge is an example. Uh, uh, fifth, uh, fifth is individual. Uh, uh, we have uh, already seen. Uh, uh, sixth, uh, sixth is organizations, uh, international organizations, NGO, NGO, IGO, and so on. Uh, seventh, the further mechanism. Uh, we have is equipped itself with the further mechanism for regulating conflict and restablishing peace. Uh, it is identified in a system of action, peacemaking and so on. <coughs> also, in some situation, uh, uh, the globalization is uh, to create a tool of the worldwide patchwork government. Let's say Bos uh, Kosovo, Bosnia, East Timor, uh, and so on. Also Trieste, I come from Trieste uh, in, in the 50s uh, years, uh, was a, 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 a little state uh, uh, waiting for uh, the future. Uh, and, uh, and also uh, negotiation. We have negotiation. Negotiation, uh, negotiation is very important because the uh, uh, tend to deal with minor problems and also to reduce major uh, problems to minor problems. Uh, yes, I have already concluded. I have already concluded. Excuse me. I conclude. Yes, yes, of course. Of course. The analysis, uh, <laughs> uh, indeed, uh, new, we have concluded in, uh, with uh, this uh, statement. Uh, the new worldwide globalization uses uh, this uh, new instrument to deal with the challenges of violence and competing conception of peace in order to achieve a homogeneous, uh, instrumentally useful, effective and efficient peace. And thank you, and I have a real thing. Sorry. Ten minutes, yes. Excuse me. Thank you very much. Okay. Colleague, the new professor, the Spanish, 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 the Профессор Абсолюта, директор Центра Комбайта Северной Кубы.
final stage, and I would like to add about the academic side of the Future Academy, keeping in mind that the motto of, or slogan, of this academy should become scientific thought as planetary phenomena by Vernadsky book. Since we were discussing global civilization here, I believe that the goal of our academic research should be the development of global studies for the formation of global civilization. Here are two aspects united in one. And I'd like to draw your attention to one issue which has been mentioned by Ilya, the globalization of science. This globalization of science is done with the help of globalistics, but this term has been coined in Russia. If we search online, we will not find globalistics, or we will not find globalistics beyond Russian. Uh, even in Russian citation index, we will not find 200 publications using globalistics terms. The studies have been done, and they reflect the fact that we should rather speak about global studies and global challenges. So we are talking about globalistics, studying a lot at the Department of Global Processes. It reveals its interdisciplinary status when it's united with politology, its political globalistics, when it's informatics, its inform information globalistics, with the law, its legal globalistics, space research, space globalistics. So recently we had suggested the field which is related with global education and globalization of education. We suggested to call it educational globalistics. It's a new term which has not been used previously, therefore we are coining it now. Above all, the process of globalization of the science fields which appear as a result of globalistics, global economics, global geography, global history, etc. These two processes, development of globalistics and globalization of other related disciplines which may not be part of globalistics, makes the essence to two main trends for globalization of sciences. I believe that this trends will be studied in our academy. I'd like to, in conclusion, I would like to say and to support the idea of Yuri Vladimirovich that one of the first tasks for research should be development of goals for sustainable development, global sustainable development. This uh, task has been set in Rio, and the goals for millennia are ending in 2015, only one of them is by till 2020, so we had to get involved in the process, and if we are involved in this process, we may influence the definition of sustainable goals, which will be accepted at the one of the UN uh, General Assemblies. Therefore, I remind you that we had created the Moscow Club, and we are now thinking on what should be the first presentation, the first session of the Moscow Club. I believe we should not do one presentation for Moscow Club uh, while working on Millennia Goals here. We should unite this work and concentrate our efforts on development of goals for sustainable development. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that these goals, at least by us, should be non-spheric oriented. In order to implement ideas stated by Vernadsky, who not only had set a foundation by his 
uh, theory of noosphere, but he became the founding father of the global studies. The fact that uh, Bernatsky is a pioneer of global studies, that he has studied them at the beginning of the last century in Moscow University, we have defined it clearly with Ilya Vyacheslavovich this year, and I believe that this field, I believe that if we'll create such an academy, it will attract attention of uh, scientific community, and as a result, we will be able not just to increase the spectrum of our tasks, but to bring the resolution of this task uh, in, to a new level. level. Professor Farah, professor of Lebanon University, president of the Open University for Dialogue Among Civilization, Lebanon. Well, the audience is impatient. Esteemed chairman, esteemed colleagues, dear friends and colleagues, taking into account that you are too tired after lunch, taking into account that our colleagues have used their authority, I believe it's more, it will be more efficient if you can read closely my presentation or its e-version or in the book that will be published I just like to I have prepared thesis I have prepared the thesis now I'm abridging it further making a summary of the thesis and now I'm submitting it to further cuts wisdom of science and path to an atmospheric civilization. A vector of scientific sort. I'm in detail analyzing the term noosphere since in the history of modern science there were many misunderstandings and misconceptions of uh, this term. So I'm analyzing in details and also I have touched the issue of Vernadsky as a great scientist, philosopher, cosmic philosopher. So I'm studying in detail the formation of noospheric intellect. So the full version of my paper I present to the chairman of this board in order to publish it. It's already published. Very good. And above all, I'd like to use this opportunity in order to present to the Department of Global Studies and to our future academy, Academy of Global Studies, my book in different languages. So in high-tech era, this includes 17 publications the compendium works. Some of them are in Russian, some of them are written in other languages. There are works where I'm an author or author of the foreword or co-author. It is my humble intellectual present to the dean, the dean, in order for these works to be used in electronic library at the first stage, at uh, first at the department and then in the academy. I believe that I'm on time. I kept my word. These are my works here. Tatiana Shestova. Can you hear me? Dear organizers, dear participants of the conference, I'll try to be very brief. The topic of my presentation is global historical approach to the heritage of Vernadsky. The 20th century, 
entered the global system at the age of the crisis of the global civilization, modern civilization, which was de developed in the 17th and 18th century and fully, well, fully developed by the 19th century. Modern civilization, this industrial civilization, scientific progress, civilization of where uh, the, the Europocentrism and classical capitalism dominating it and classical liberal values. Crisis of modern technology, civilization was um, revealed in the old histories, revolution, democratic revolutions, uh, uh, crunch of the um, colonial system and other formal events of the 20th century. The reflection of the crisis of the modern um, civilization also revealed in the uh, digress and destroy the modern science, uh, science, appearance of uh, new developments and uh, approaches. Global fiscalism is one of such approaches which would emerge in this middle of the 20th century and the wave of the changes introduced into world global system or achievements of the first military international revolution of the middle mid 60s of the 20th century as a principle of the new cognitive approach it it requires to look at these processes as uh, not in the um, development but from the point of view of a planetary significance this planetary significance should become the basis of the new formation of the new system of values which will show all the potential of the future to come transfer <coughs> from philosophical concept to the future were um, justified by the uh, some leading philosophers of the 20th century Jasper, Suresh, Pengar, Sarokin, Kondratiev, Lenin and Toynbe, Schumpeter and others one of the founders of the global historical mentality was academician Vernadsky. In the endless heredity, heritage of Vernadsky, you, we can find materials on uh, the development of historical mentality, teaching about no fear as an uh, unavoidable stage in the history of the No fear of Genesis was the uh, foundation or stem, uh, from which stem the methodological foundation for many scientific concepts of the 20th century, but the uh, cognitive uh, foundation for in the tragical realization of uh, the role the mankind plays in the history of the world. Historization of uh, science started by Vernadsky and others and continued by post-positivists of the 1960s and reflected in the 1980s, in the end, enabled to save the um, science as it is. Crisis of uh, historical rationality is not the crisis of the science in general, but it is just transfer from classical science to neoclassical, from modern to postmodern, from the science of the industrial era to the science of the post-industrial era, era of, of globalization. The works of Vernotsky of the um, science thoughts as a planetary manifestation of, were created in this global historical perspective. Research in the, uh, our country was uh, it was what Vernadsky did, uh, was doing starting from the 1920s when he developed the commission for studying the history of knowledge and the ending with the articles of the 1940s. And then disciplinarity and interdisciplinary aspect from disciplinary to problem, a principle of um, organizing the science which later appeared the most important principle of globalistics. With this approach, uh, historism should remain the most important tool to keep or to preserve the systemic approach uh, to all the knowledge 
uh, gained by the mankind. Many scientists wrote about it. For example, Fernand Brodel in the mid-50s, uh, French philosopher, would be writing about uh, convergence of um, natural sciences and uh, history of mankind, which will reflect the most important uh, advances of the of the men's history. Vernadsky was working on it even before that. Scientific research of the past always brings into to something new in human mentality, but at the threshold moment and the brink point the developing or newly obtained novelty becomes the sphere, belongs to the sphere of reasons. According to the numerous requests, the Presidium takes the voluntaristic decisions, and I'm warning you about it. Luckily or unluckily, Professor Valiev is not with us here today, and we lost uh, uh, Mr. St Professor Stepanov, the president of International Independent Ecological Political University. No, he's not here. It was a mistake. Rector of the university. Dear participants of the conference, I would add to a, a spoon of, uh, you know, of oil into the barrel of uh, honey. Uh, Nikita Moiseev. Uh, has identified the tasks of the objectives of science. It is not to plan. Planning is not the objective of science objective. This, its task is to warn about the risks which are, which will face, which will communities and civilization will face. One of the first warnings of academician may say was the development of nuclear winter. Second warning, it's ecological imperative, which he developed in the system of universal evolutionism. And the third warning he made, very interesting one, in the beginning of the 1990s, you all remember, we were, see, we were in search of national idea here in this country. The politicians started uh, uh, looking for this idea, but uh, again we are coming back to it, to the national idea, you know it. Our president suddenly out of the blue a return to the concept of the nation, Russian uh, national idea, academician Moiseev in the 1994 wrote that national idea is not uh, what we uh, have to talk about national objectives, not national idea. National objective is caring about the population, the citizen, even Cicero uh, used to talk about it. And uh, suddenly, in the uh, in in the twentieth in the year of twentieth anniversary of the Russian Constitution, what are the objectives of the Russian Federation in ac according to this um, Constitution? The article of the Constitution that Russian Federation is a social state, and the most objective, the most goal is to create the conditions of the decent life of citizens and free development of personalities. Together with uh, academician Moisev disciples, and he co-author Professor Tarko, said, look through 146 constitutions of various countries of the world and, and discovered that various approaches, but, but implicitly this or explicitly this position is written there directly or indirectly, only 10 countries close to us are similar to ours in, uh, in terms of history or uh, the index of development of the uh, uh, human potential. Gini coefficient, it is the discrepancy between two 10% most wealthy and most poor uh, citizens, ecological efficiency, index of um, uh, just a sec, uh, the mortality coefficient, index, uh, index the perception of corruption and sp uh, spendings, expenditures on uh, education. Uh, taking all these indices, we came up with the 
composite complicated index together with Starco, we identified, we determined that among these 10 countries which are similar to ours, Sweden, Germany, and the 18th country, this Finland, as a former uh, ingredient or component of the Russian Empire, uh, Russia's 121 position, Ukraine, Russia carries the 146 position in this index, and the, uh, China the same. And we came to the conclusion that, unfortunately for us, without development of the civil society, normal and decent conditions for decent life of the citizens of our country cannot be developed, and their decent and free development. Thank you for your attention. President of uh, um, Mr. Lawrence, your General Director of the Federal uh, uh, Bureau for in the Certification of Intellectual Property. Two minutes. I don't pr promise ten minutes. Two minutes, but I will try to be short. In fact, I have a very, something serious to tell you. During 40 years, I have been dealing with or developing the theory of ideas, and I thought I was discovering something new. But then, looking back into Plato's theory of ideas, decided that it is done, has no connection with us. And I, four years, um, I needed to understand that we were talking about uh, the same wavelengths. He was um, dealing with the uh, his contemporary problems, creative states, and I'm talking about intellectual kind of economies, uh, the problems which are topical now. I have prepared and published in 2020 the modern theory, uh, methodology of innovative economics. This is a scientific knowledge which um, in the history of civilization, it has always uh, existed. Before Plato, as Bertrand Russell used to say, it from, take, uh, came from Socrates to Pythagoras, Philosophics, and so on. It goes back into the beginning of the world as a theory of ideas. It's very deep in the civilization. It was reproduced later, Ficino. I will remind you that Platon's Academy uh, existed uh, 900 years, Cosimo Medici restored this academy. They inspired in the uh, in the Renaissance, and this re Renaissance uh, distributed the Plato's works in the whole Europe, then Descartes in Europe, John Locke in Britain, and Hume in, in Britain, Leibniz in Kant and Gegel in Germany. And Racine France completed all this, finalized this theory, uh, who uh, called it ideology. Karl Marx never understood the, the meaning of the word, uh, I, uh, the word ideology and introduced a different meaning to it. Karl Marx has nothing to do with ideology, no, no politics in it. Uh, Inside the theory of ideas, there exist many laws uh, which are unified for all systems of knowledge, both fundamental or technical. I am des describing them. Nobody is criticizing me. You can look the references or entries in the Internet. I have my citation index is very high. Uh, in spite of the fact I didn't publish anything abroad, there are 1,190,000 1, citations in abroad. I don't have enough time to tell you about it. But I want to stress uh, or focus on that uh, the conclusion we have uh, jumped upon recently, that all nature is divided in three levels, more dead, life, and intellectual. Uh, why it is interesting? Why did they arrive at this conclusion? We are not using the word globalistics. Why? Because all the laws are not inside the scientific disciplines, but they are in nature. 
if you don't understand nature of the micro world, we are not going to understand the astrophysics. If you don't understand genetic, uh, genetic knowledge, you are not going to understand uh, biological nature. All um, elements contain both micro and macro levels. Micro is what you are talking about, globalistics and micro is what is ideas um, underlying this uh, to create a process which produces the product which is uh, updates much faster than biological body uh, organisms uh, hereditary transfer of genes and code of the adaptation goes through the hereditary system while in the intellectual nature is adapted through the creative process all um, all are subjective to the unified laws. I, I am delivering lectures four years each, four hours each, six hours, eight hours. Today I just in very in very brief uh, briefing you today on this. The modern theory of ideas is the uh, intellectual grounds for the innovation technology. This first volume. It is the red threat of civilization. I am an intermediary link which actualized these ideas and Plato's ideas. After me, uh, myriads will come which will take it further. But when you build the vector of the intellectual nature, you know what is going to happen next. Uh, the mankind will become the, the one organism, one in when we are talking about catastrophe, it's all rubbish. We are not facing any catastrophe because there are mechanisms of self-regulation, self-organization, and self-preservation in every nature. Nothing bad is in store for us, whether it is going on to take place in Russia or in, in the United States. That is the question. We have to um, uh, talk about the quality of power measure the index of the quality of power because it is absolutely different in different countries and the lot depends on it and the intensity of the intellectual development in every in each country and in this respect and this relation during lunch with Vladimir Yuri Vladimir we were talking about the fact that it is necessary to um, create the world on the world wide level the Council of Wizards and Yuri Vladimirovich would make a brilliant leader or chairman of this uh, Supreme Council of Wizards and to talk about measuring of the quality of uh, power. All problems we are talking about, they don't depend on the standards and methods or laws written by laws written by lawyers, but they depend on the quality of power. This I, determines everything everywhere and always in the Platonian times and uh, and the academy, Platonian's academy uh, was um, established to deprive the mankind of the uh, illiterate monarchs. This was the objective, or rulers, better um, broadly speaking. This was his task, and the, to transfer the consciousness from uh, understanding of fast um, uh, fast going and to compress the information, very rare, very few people have this ability. That is what we have to do. Well, just two words about Russia. Russia was not left beyond this modern theory because Lomonosov, when he learned in Germany, he uh, got these ideas from Leibniz and he put it in the part as part of rhetorics where 16 types of ideas were a fundamental uh, foundation for the rhetorics and understanding of any questions Michael Lomonosov has created this wonderful uh, work that has radically changed mentality and intellectual uh, abilities of Russian speakers therefore our Russian language is the source which will, which is giving and will give, produce huge cadre of talented individuals who are
generating ideas because they cannot do it live otherwise. Furthermore, it has been translated by Bogdanov. That he, uh, that's why he was despised uh, and persecuted by Lenin. And Kondratyev had troubles with this issue as well when he spoke has spoken about I started to speak about ideas and socio economic knowledge he also got into the same pit under the same press. I didn't know this facts. So thank God I have survived that time and in the Soviet days I have accumulated the potential which I'm implementing now. So I'm if you'll meet at the reception please drink the first toast to the, toward the creation of the world say council of sages headed by yuri vladimirovich thank you for your attention thank you we can save on a postgraduate but it's wrong that is kalushnaya postgraduate of this specialized department of globalistics of the global process faculty of Lomonos of Moscow University. I try to be very brief. My presentation is dedicated to political aspects of transition towards global development. Uh, it's wrong to ignore it. It makes the transition inefficient. That's an introduction. As we know, starting in 1992, the idea of transition to sustainable development is confirmed and deta detailed, very detailed in all official documents of the United Nations. In the meantime, as we all know, the New York or UN Organization on Environmental Protection, UNEP, prior to the summit of 2012, has issued a memo for politicians and decision makers, GEO5, where it stated the full crash of the plan mapped 20 years ago, when after uh, out of 20 items of agenda, only four were ranked positively. We believe that it had l this process of transition to sustainable development, or more exact, its political discourse had little efficiency because it's inefficient on this transition stage from managerial stage to a pragmatic policy. Although the necessity of such transition is well recognized by the entire international community as a response to the challenge of this.